Hi everybody, welcome back to the studio. I uh, hope you enjoyed last week's episode and our little road trip. Um, this week there's still quite a bit of work to do on Mr Croxton. We have to add a barrier varnish, which I'll be doing shortly. We've got some retouching to do um, and I've also got a little bit more research on him that I found out uh, online, so I'll share that with you as well. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers and to everybody who hopped over to Patreon. It is great to see you all over there and I appreciate all your comments and questions that you send over. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, Manchester, it's not too bad today, a bit grey. That's typical for Manchester, grey skies. It's like living in a Tupperware box. But um, yeah, let's get started. So last week we'd removed a lot of that sticky Damar varnish and we decided that the majority of that background was overpainted to hide a past restoration and probably an overclean. Um, so there wasn't much point removing much more um, and I was happy with the finish. So I'm just adding a barrier varnish now to the painting and this will allow me to retouch on top of the painting without actually applying fresh pigment to the original paint surface. So this varnish is uh, fully reversible, it's a hydrocarbon varnish, um, it's got really good uh, light fast properties so it shouldn't yellow or discolour over time. Um, it looks quite thick as it's going on there but once I've got the coverage all over the painting and not got any um, dead spots I'll then work the varnish up and down and across to get a really nice smooth uh, finish on the painting. But as you can see already those colours are coming through nicely. You can see it's um, either sash or office of chain coming through and that blue, kind of grey blue, steel blue of his, of his coat coming through as well. But yeah, I'm just checking there to make sure that everywhere is covered. But yeah, those colours are coming through really nice. So as that's drying, I'm going to start to have a look at the frame now. So this is a, a traditional wood carved frame. Um, it's been through the walls a bit. You can see it's got um, some bracing on there to kind of keep those corners together. Um, these slotted screws are a nightmare. I'm so glad someone invented the uh, Phillips or the Posse. Um, so this is all coming off. And then once this is all off the back, I can start to look at the front of the frame. Um, it's in pretty bad condition. I think it's been damp and that's why the gesso is popping off in places. So my first thing will be just to give it a brush over and remove any debris. But you can see here where the dirt's accumulated over the years. Um, so these frames would have been hand carved and then they will have had a gesso applied which was um, a plaster with animal glue to give that white smooth finish. And then there'd have been a bowl clay on top of that and then finally it will have been gilded. So in certain sections the gilding's pretty good on the internal rails um, but the first thing is for me to fill all those losses so once everything's secured um, I use um, a clay polymer to fill in those areas and smooth over and this is um, a really good way of matching up the losses and I'll apply a varnish first and then I'll go over again with the bowl clay. So this ochre colour now is the bowl clay over my polymer finishes, fills rather. And then once that's done I'll be using or I have used a selection of um, metallic powders mixed with uh, wax binders to match the colour and match that existing finish. We're not going for a full uh, re-gild again. I'm trying to keep some of that original gilding coming through. So with the barrier varnish dry now, I can begin the retouching process. Again, this is just tiny little dots of pigment to push back the top of the canvas weave. So this painting has been cleaned and restored in the past. It's probably over 250 years old. So it does, it will have been um, handled at some point. But these little dots are just the weave of the top of the canvas coming through. So I'm using my um, pigments to just push those back. That section's a little bit of over paint that wouldn't remove. So again, I'll just touch that back in and push it back. So. I'm just trying to consolidate that paint surface with minimal intervention really. All those little dots build up to make the painting look um, 
weak and damaged so this technique is just to really push them back so I'm color matching all the way and this is obviously quite speeded up there's probably quite a few hours work involved here I quite like the way that Walt was included on his is it a beauty spot? I don't know, but it was kept in probably quite a defining part of his character. And again, there's little bits of overpaint on there that are discoloured that wouldn't remove, so they get touched back in and, and pushed back. And then you can really see in his forehead the horizontal weave of the canvas, those lines. So again, just small little dots to push those back as well. As I work across the paint and I'm always pulling away myself just to make sure it looks balanced and there's nothing that looks like it shouldn't be there. Right, so I've retouched in there now and I'm quite happy with um, how, that, how that's looking. Um, I'm going to show you the, uh, the research that I've done this week and the little bits of uh, extra information that I found out. So let me just show you what that looks like. So you'll have to bear with me here. This is the original auction record of Mr Croxton and it's from the estate of Lord Kenyon of Greddington. Um, so this is the condition you can see that it arrived in. Take a note of the frame. Um, and these are all the other lots that were put up for auction um, from the estate. So there's ceramics, there's books, there's portraits, militaria, all sorts of things. So they must have just been really clearing out and um, moving a lot of stuff on. Some of these old books look fantastic. Um, books on agriculture, books on botany, um, fabulous things. And then I came to the portraits. So there's quite a collection of portraits that was offered up for sale as well. There's our Mr. Croxton from the original auction in 2021. So I clicked through a lot of these portraits and I came across this one, which was of a George Kenyon. So the first thing that struck me about this portrait was it was looked in a very similar style. Um, the gentleman had the same looking wig. The cravat was very similar. If you look at the way the cravat has been handled and the way it's got the fringe on the end there as well. But the thing that caught me most was the frame. Look at the frame. It's identical to Mr. Croxton's. It's the exact same frame. So obviously these portraits were framed at the same time. They're from the same period of time. And that got me thinking more about the Kenyans. So on the back of this portrait, we've got the same kind of lettering as the front of Mr. Croxton. Now, whether this was done by a family member or an artist to start recording the history, um, I'm not sure. But there's definitely links between the Kenyans and the Croxtons at some point. Um, so yeah, I kind of had a bit of a look around what that might look like too. And now in the rest of the collection, there is a Thomas Kenyon who was George Kenyon's brother. And this is a portrait of the young Roger, son of George Kenyon. Again, similar kind of style, similar writing on the back to our Mr. Croxton. This is the grandson of Thomas Kenyon, who was George Kenyon's brother. So that portrait I just showed you is George Kenyon. Now, Lord Kenyon was um, in the law. He was made a baronet in the early um, 18th century. So this Lloyd Kenyon II, he was articled in 1749 to Tomkinson, an attorney of Nantwich. So I think the link here is there's a link between MPs, there's a link between the law, there's a link between barristers, and I think these two families are in the same area. They're in round Nantwich and Middlewich, and there's got to be some kind of either working practice or maybe through marriage. Um, so on to artists. Uh, Charles Gervais or Gervais came up as a contemporary of Nella. He was in Nella's studio. Now, I don't think our portrait is by Nella, but this kind of tickled me. So he was quite um, quite rude to his sitters and he reported to have remarked to the Duchess of Bridgewater that she did not have a handsome ear. And when she asked him his opinion of what a handsome ear was, he showed her one of his own. So he he's quite funny. I don't know if it's him though, but the portrait of George Kenyon was attributed or in the style of... Michael Dahl. Now, he was um, 
one of Nella's um, contemporaries and studio assistants, but he also had good links with the church and the law. So perhaps this portrait um, is a follower of Michael Dahl. It could have links to Nella's studio. I'm not too sure. Um, but I quite like that link with um, Dahl and the law. So Mr. Croxton's got that ceremonial uh, sash or chain of office so he's obviously something to do with either being an MP or within the law. Uh, perhaps there's marriage links with the Kenyans and that link later on transpires that um, it became part of the estate of um, Lord Kenyon of Greddington and that's how it stayed. Maybe for hundreds of years it could have been tucked away in there and then the time has come for it to be moved on and that's where we find him. Well, the portrait now is in much better condition. He's been relined, he's been retouched, he's been cleaned. The frame has been restored, that original carved frame. And yeah, I think he looks much improved. We've got some colours coming through of his wig, which is fantastic, and his cravat, that fringe. I love the colour of his um, shoulder. And here you can see how he arrived. So yeah, he was quite cockled, there was stretcher bar marks, there was some rips and some tears. Um, and then this is how he's been returned to his clients. So he's in much more stable condition and he's ready for the next 200 years. Um, I, I'm pleased with how he's turned out. I would love to have found a little bit more about him. So maybe Mr. Croxton for now will just remain a bit of a mystery exactly who he was, but I hope I've given you some idea of who he might be. Okay, so that's it for Mr. Croxton of Ravenscroft. Um, I'm not sure who he is. He could be Colonel Thomas Croxton. He could be George Croxton. He could be a son of George Croxton. I think the dates, looking at that other portrait around 1655, when he was born, the George Kenyon, he looks a similar kind of, uh, like a peer of that time. So maybe he is somebody in that area there, but... I don't know, maybe we'll never know. If anyone wants to take up some extra research and delve deeper on that, let me know. And if anything does crop up, I will, uh, I'll do a follow-up as well. But um, thanks for being along for this journey. I've got some great portraits coming up soon and some great paintings. Um, I've also got some exclusives on Patreon where I'm going to look at some frame restoration tutorials. So please feel free to head over there. Um, but for now, um, still grey. <laughs> that's par for the course um, thanks for watching everybody and I will see you all soon cheers guys, thank you